Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And thank you again for joining us for our AdviceCon webinar series. We're actually going to start a, a new series called Accomplish More with Less. You know, it's the desire of every organization to be able to increase efficiency and reduce costs. That's the goal of this series, how to get you to do that with Power Automate. Now, our attended audience for this is very much the beginners who are looking to just get started, get something accomplished, and achieve your first flow in Power Automate. A little bit about us. We are at Visicon. We help organizations achieve greater impact by leveraging work management technologies so that you can accomplish more with less. As work management consultants and technology specialists, our focus is on streamlining processes, improving systems, and achieving better outcomes. A little bit about myself. My name is Sean, and I am a project advisor and trainer with Advisacon. I do have a background in math education, and we all know that means I've got a lot of problems. I do have experience in implementing 365 as solutions with a decade of experience in doing instruction and training. I am a PMP and a Teams MCP, and I'm a semi-professional dad joke teller. I'd love to hear yours in, in response to this webinar today. Let's look at our agenda for today. We're going to talk about a use case, uh, a, a team-specific problem that can be solved with automation. And yes, uh, we'll, we'll give a little explanation, uh, uh, understanding about how does this automation even work within the Microsoft Dataverse. Then I'll go ahead and demonstrate a build. And again, hopefully that it's simple, it's achievable, so that you as a beginner can get your first flow working. And then I'll, have, I'll, I'll bring it back and uh, give some topics for consideration as you begin your first build. All right, let's look at the use case. What problem are we solving today? All right, we've got a small sales team. It's actually just one sales representative with their sales manager. So Isaiah is the representative and Miriam is the sales director. Isaiah creates the proposals and sends them to Miriam for approval before they're sent out to the client. Now, while they've got you know Teams and a SharePoint document library for file storage in place, they also recognize that their process is highly manual and it takes a lot of time to just doing the sending back and forth. And uh, really, they don't even have a formalized process yet. So that's their desire that we would help them formalize the process automate the process. And the one specific thing they want is that they want to be able to get an email notification. They work in emails often. So they like they would like to know what's where the process is uh, with an email notification. Before we go ahead and solve the problem with them, let's talk about the Dataverse. The Dataverse is Microsoft's solution so that data can be shared and unified across the different applications. The idea is that you have just one touch to the data. It enters somewhere in the Dataverse, whether through SharePoint or Microsoft 365 or Teams, and that the automation built uh, within the Dataverse will connect that data and uh, to certain outputs. For example, if you want it in Power BI, if you want to run a flow, if you want to uh, build a a planner board, all this is possible across the Dataverse. And again, today we're just looking at how we can uh, get a document approval process in place using SharePoint and Power Automate. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and build, but let's look at um, some considerations before building. First of all, make sure that you have two folders set up. That's the, that's the way we're designing this process, that there's a needs approval folder and an approved folder. This is, again, formalizing our business process where we, we have a starting point and a finish point. So we know that everything in the needs approval folder, yes, needs approval, and everything in the approved folder is ready to go to send to the client. Also, note that we're building with an out-of-the-box template. We're starting with this structure, this frame already in place, created by Microsoft, and we're just give, giving some little builds on top of it. I am gonna not use any variables. We're just gonna use some drop-downs and some, some links, and definitely some dynamic content, a very much useful feature when building uh, Power Automate flows. Here's an overview of the flow. It starts in SharePoint. That's the trigger. All flows need a trigger, a starting point, a starting event, if you will. 
Then it'll go to the approval process. Notice in the third box down, there's a condition. What, what's going to happen if it's approved? If yes, certain actions will take place after that. And if no, another set of actions will take place. Again, this is out of the box template, and we'll just do some modifications to that. All right, let's go into Power Automate. Here we are in Power Automate, starting at the home screen. We're gonna to go to templates. As I mentioned, we're using out of the box templates for beginners, for easy achievement. And this one is called start an approval for a new file to move it to a new folder. There it is. When you open it up in this screen, they're looking for the connectors. Do you have a SharePoint permission? Do you have approvals uh, usage? Yes. So we continue. OK. And here's the, here's the trigger. And here are the uh, sequential following actions. We just need to fill in the spaces. We just need to tell the flow where to go, what to do with it, and where do you want to take it. So we start first, site address. What is this? This is the SharePoint site that my team is built on. Let me jump over there first. This is my team, the sales and marketing team. And yes, all files are stored on a document library associated with this sales and marketing team, SharePoint. I look for the sales and marketing URL and I click on that. The next box will give me a, a waterfall of associated folders. I go to the shared documents folder and it's in the general files. And I am pointing specifically to the needs approval folder. So anytime a file is created in this folder, that is the starting trigger. Okay. Now we can add some content here. What do you want the, the flow? We back that in, up in three, two, one. We can add some content here. What do we want the title of this approval to be? It'll be the sales proposal review. You can call it what we would like. Who are we going to assign this to? Well, again, Isaiah works with Miriam. So let's make sure that this gets sent to Miriam. OK, there's already a pre-filled uh, line here. Please approve if this is ready for prime time. And we'll leave the file name. This is called dynamic content. Items that are created because of the above uh, actions get uh, filtered down, they flow down rather, onto the next fields. All right, the item link, we're going to use the link to this, the SharePoint folder called needs approval. I'm going to copy the link and paste it there so that Miriam can click on this and go straight to the folder. All right, the description. I'm going to use the file name. How did I get here? The add dynamic content. And there again, there's data that comes with the previous actions. So file name will be added there. OK, let's, let's click on condition and let's see what we have here. Response, if it's equal to approved, or uh, that will trigger the yes. Or if no, let's work on the yes side. If yes, I want to create a file. I want the approved file to move to our new approved folder. So I, cl I click on that SharePoint site. Again, shared documents. It's in the general channel and approved. OK, it's going to have the file name and associated file content. No need to make changes there. I also want to delete the file. This is part of the intelligence of this uh, template. I want to delete the previous file in the, well, that's not the site. I want this site and use a file identifier to delete it. So it really keeps my process smooth and clear. If it's in the needs approval, it needs approval. If it's approved, it is approved. Very well defined business process here. The team also mentioned they want uh, emails to be given with decisions either way. So let's set that up. I'm going to click Add Action. This is where we get to choose an, a new action. I'm going to use Outlook to send an email. All 
okay, to who will this go? It's just the two-person team. So Isaiah will get an email back. And we'll, we can add some content here. If it comes down this channel, I know it's approved. Okay, I'm going to say... Tell me what file it is again. I, I, you know, I've got so many of these flying. Remind me which file we're looking at. So I'm going to say, tell me the file name and that it was approved. And what comments were given? Where did this, what does this comments come from? The comments come from the approval process. Okay. Now I also want and an email if it is rejected. And that's probably the more important one because I, I need to know what edits need to be made if it was rejected. So again, Isaiah will want the email reply and say, you know, Isaiah, this is a reviewed sales proposal and you need to edit. Remind me again, which file am I editing? Oh yeah, give me the file name. And what are the actions needed? Okay, so to review, I've uh, defined the path of approval, adding an email to be sent to Isaiah, and I've added the path of rejection or not approval, and what further edits need to be made. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, we're given the warning that something may trigger a loop, uh, but fortunately I've tested this and this one will be just fine. But as, as you begin your first flows, make sure to test it and that's what this button is for. Let's go ahead and test it. And yes, I'll manually test this. How do we do that? We go ahead and manually bring in a file to the needs approval folder. I'm going to click and drag this file into our team site. OK. And now what should happen next according to the flow? I can go back and look at the flow. I see that it is running. And when you first start your flows, you'll notice that it, it, it checks what is working along the way and where it's at and that it's, it requires further actions to be taken. What are those actions again? Miriam needs to review it. So let's go over and check Miriam's inbox. Here we are in Miriam's inbox and we can see that we got a, a pro, pro sales proposal review. Clicking on this link would take us to the document where it could be reviewed. Let's say Miriam has reviewed it and approved it. Let's go ahead and click approve. Now here we can add the comments. All right, so what happens next in our flow? Again, it's a very defined flow. Steps must be happening first, second, third. Now let's go to Isaiah's email. Here we are in Isaiah's email, and we see that the document was approved and Great job, well done, please forward to the client. Okay, now what was supposed to happen next is that the document is, is moved to the approved folders. Let's check there. Okay, and we're here in our team site with the approved folder. And yes, there, there was just moved. The, the flow has run as desired. Again, this is designed for first time uh, Power Automate flow users. So I just want to show you what you can look at when you look at the flow. You can see the run history and you can ask it to refresh. If ever it's failed, you can click on it and see uh, why did it fail. Furthermore, if you ever need to turn it off, here is where you would click to turn off the flow. Uh, for example, if you, got, you actually got caught in a loop, you go ahead and turn this off and it'll stop and you can actually uh, get do the fixes there. So that's an important feature to know. Isaiah and Miriam have clearly defined their approval process between the two of them. Uh, let's let's look at some considerations when building a flow. First of all, start simple, start small, and know that you're just creating a scalable uh, practice. And in fact, we'll go ahead and build on this series uh, to show you how you can turn this simple and small flow into something much larger. 
Remember that if you ever need to turn off the flow, it's there under your flows. Now here's where, here's how do you get started? Think about your highly manual and repetitive tasks and diagram them. How do you want it to be? And then here's, here's what the idea behind automation is that, you know, uh, when you're working, uh, you focus on what needs a human attention, and then really the rest should be automated. Thank you for watching this webinar. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions, like or follow us on our social media platforms, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We offer many free trainings in our online academy, and you can access those by visiting advisacon.thinkific.com. For project managers, simply become a member of Advisacon Academy to receive the code to redeem PDUs. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.